One problem I've noticed in lots of drawings of windows that I've seen is that they can end up looking a bit cartoon-like. So let me show you how I draw windows to give them a more realistic, more architectural look. So how do we draw windows and avoid that flat cartoonish look? Hi, I'm Stephen Travers. Let me show you and talk you through how I think and approach drawing windows to create a really nice three-dimensional architectural effect. Let's have a look. I'm drawing this window directly in ink without any pencil guidelines and I'm going to apply some tone at the end to really pop it into three dimensions. I always start slowly carefully measuring my perspective angles and just checking the proportions because if I get things wrong here it's it's going to really limit me later on and if I get them right it'll be a guide for the rest of the drawing. So I'm particularly paying attention to the proportions of the window opening, but also the panes of glass, those four panes of glass really help me just check that I've got that right. And now to avoid the cartoon effect, it's really important to put as many depth lines, as I call them, in as possible to create that real 3D structure. So the window sits back from the wall surface and the strips of timber supporting the glass, they actually have a side edge to them. The lower window sits back further than the top window and all of these we show by drawing enough lines. Failure to draw enough lines ends up contributing to that flat appearance that can look a bit a bit cartoony. Now I've decided I'm going to add the blind because that gives me a further opportunity to create a three-dimensional feel and uh, yeah I'm really keen to do that whenever I get a chance. So I'm just adding the last of those depth lines put a line in for the blind, which I'll mostly show by tone, and now I apply the tone using my Copic markers. Always important to go carefully at the start, try and get those corners really sharp, and just be aware that depending on the paper and the ink, the ink can continue to bleed into the paper after we've finished uh, drawing and taking the pen off, and nothing's worse than watching your nice fine white space fade with the ink as it bleeds into it. And so I'm just looking back and forth, back and forth, back and forth between the photo and the drawing to, to really get those shades and tones as accurate as I can. And now I get the chance to do the blind and to put those tones in as well. And you'll see how it really creates a, a three-dimensional effect when I put that final shadow on that's being cast from the window opening onto the blind. And often we can't see how something's going to look until the very end. I also use the dark tone just to correct a line that wasn't quite right on that windowsill. So it's important to see, see our, our tone as a chance sometimes to hide earlier mistakes. It's always important not to worry about mistakes. Uh, they never look as bad at the end. So here I go just with this blind and a little bit more tone and then it's done. A nice window. Well, I hope that was helpful. If it was, please like, please leave a comment because these are the ways I know what videos have been more helpful and therefore what direction to go in the future. Do you like this format where I, I talk as I draw through something? Because I can do more of them if you like them, if they're helpful. Anyway, in the meantime, keep drawing, have fun. See you next time.